We are thrilled to have all you here for our next session, the very first one actually in our fundraising masterclass learning series. This is the first year that we've done the learning series specifically on fundraising because we know it's such an area that so many social entrepreneurs really want to learn about and learn from. So this session is going to be on maximizing your value at convening spaces. Uh, these events that are coming up, we've got the School World Forum, we've got Opportunity Collaboration, we've got Catalyzing Change Week, and we're all excited about being in person again, and how do you maximize your time at these spaces. We also have two more in the series that are coming up. The second one is the building blocks of fundraising and going back to the basics, which will be April 25th. And then we are all fundraisers, everyone a fundraiser from our interns to our board, and that will be on May 4th. 30th, because we wanted to give you time for Catalyzing Change Week, which is May 1st through 5th. I wanted to introduce our amazing speakers today. We are thrilled to have them. If you haven't met Natalie Rexted, she is just a wonderful person, purpose-driven life. She's a mother, of course, first, but she's also the founder and CEO of Box, Box Philanthropy, a leading fundraising firm that serves international markets. And she's so amazing with her time that even though she can't take on all these people as clients, they really give all their resources as open source. So we're going to share some fundraising raising um, tips and, and materials with you from Black Fox. As part of her work, she's worked with Seagal Foundation and Ashoka and Opportunity Collaboration, has gone to these great trainings as a delegate and a contributor and attendee, and really wants to share that advice with all of you. She does come um, with an amazing background in philanthropy, and but I, I secretly love the fact that her organization is one of the B Corp's best for the world honoree as a change maker. It's such a cool um, award for her to receive and her company. So kudos to them. Next, I want to introduce Claire Watham, and we are thrilled that you could join us. It's in the midst of getting ready for the Skull World Forum, and she said, yes, I'd love to join in. Um, she's worked with uh, social entrepreneurs and innovators, funders, and private and public sector leaders in her work with the Skull Foundation. Claire has come with to us, you know, really unlocking resources and bridging ecosystems and that network and the voice of the people within the Skull Foundation. And I love the two initiatives that she launched, the Skull World Forum Fellowships and also the TEDx Skull Conversation Series, which have been wonderful to listen to. A uh, really interesting fun fact about her is she comes to us from San Diego um, Zoo, which she was in the Innovation Lab, which I thought was so fun. Also, she is a dancer. She studied and teaches contemporary dance and has choreographed spaces for people. But now she's choreographing, choreographing spaces for people to be to connect and learn more in these meetings and spaces. And lastly, our speaker, Matt, Matt Patton, you should know him from Catalyst 2030. He's a wonderful contribution to Catalyst. He's got 20 years of high value performance with um, fundraising and his work, building relationships is really at the heart of the work that he does. He's passionate about people and getting to know them. If you're ever in a conversation with him, you feel like you're the only person in the world at that moment. Matt has worked with large organizations, industry leaders from Bright Tech, Fitbit, AstraZeneca, Garfield, Weston, Wolfden, all lots of names dropping MasterCard and Skull with us, but building these deep collaborative relationships and working with these global leading philanthropists and thinking about how they shift the way they fund has been an initiative he's been highly involved with. The fun fact about Matt is he is an actor. Um, when he was younger, he studied, uh, studied acting. So you're going to get a little bit of a taste of that today as he talks about how he performs and acts at the events that he attends. So thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to pass it on to Natalie to share her thoughts. Thank you, Debbie. And uh, thank you to the entire Catalyst 2030 team for organizing such a timely session and inviting us to contribute. Um, it's a timely session, of course, because Skull World Forum is less than a week away. But a lot of what Claire, Matt, and I will be sharing is universal for all convenings. So, uh, but to do a Skull, a big shout out to the Skull World Forum team. We are so grateful to Claire Wathen and the team for bringing the social sector together, social sector together in such a powerful way and connected way. 
um, yeah, less than a week out from showtime and been working so hard and with your whole heart. So thank you. Also a huge shout out to the 2023 Stoll awardees. Uh, they were just announced yesterday. So congratulations. And we'll drop those, uh, in the chat and, um, Claire is going to be sharing out key insights and guidance for your time in Oxford, and Matt and I will be taking more of a fundraising lens on convenings, but much of what I have to share applies to all attendees, including those participating on the virtual hop-in and the, uh, the ecosystem. So we have a finite amount of time, so I'll jump in with highlights, uh, but we're sharing out a document we prepared for Black Fox philanthropy clients as a companion to the blog, Maximizing Sector Convenings. Um, that will be updated with Claire's guidance uh, after this webinar and sent out by Catalyst 2030 with the recording. So uh, we'll just drop in the chat uh, those, two, uh, those two pieces. And so let's begin preparing for the big week, uh, the basics. So, uh, so much can be found in the blog on the topic of maximizing your presence at convening. So I'm gonna just focus upon the highlights because we get a bit more granular in some of the written pieces. But uh, one thing that has set me up for success in the past is the level of intentionality with which I approach the space. So prior to a conference, I get clear on the outcomes. I hope to achieve in advance, and then we'll do a visualization where this comes to life. Uh, every morning while there, I spend a, a few minutes in prayer around those intentions, express gratitude for the privilege to serve this community. Um, I found that throughout the day, having anchored in that heart-centered space of service is sort of prayer in motion, and it really does shift how I show up in the space. Um, also, remember why you are there. We often focus so much upon the work needing to get done that we forget why we're in the impact sector in the first place. So what drives you? Uh, our deepest passions often spring from our deepest wounds. So what are your firsthand experiences with inequality, injustice, uh, whatever it is that inspired you to bring about change. Uh, if we center around our own purpose, it can ground us during a very heady convening. Uh, mm -hmm. Engagement pitch and crafting your why. So obviously have your organizational engagement pitch ready, clear, concise, compelling, but also your personal why this work is yours to do uh, and able to articulate that. People like to engage with people who come alive in their work and this crafting your why tool can absolutely help. So we'll drop that in the chat as well. And this came about because we were working with a client uh, many years ago, an intellectual giant, very data-driven, um, incredible track record, but had a hard time connecting meaningfully with funders. So I did, in this case, it, I did an interview Q&A format, but it was designed to get him more neck down in his interactions and was incredibly effective. And at our company retreat last week, I had actually never filled it out myself. And we did it mm -hmm. as a, an exercise. It was so powerful. And after close to 10 years, to remember why this matters and what's at stake. And um, it was really invigorating and also to hear why our team members were in this work as sort of the helpers to the helpers. And we're very unique space in the ecosystem as fundraisers. So really, really meaningful. And I've used it in board retreat, board fundraising retreats as well. So encourage you, uh, it has many, many uh, uses beyond uh, preparing you for the convening. To do with intentional outreach prior to school, um, outreach to key folks in advance is vital to maximizing your time while you're there. Um, so be thoughtful and strategic about um, not only how that outreach looks in terms of doing your homework and more, but strategic about where you set up those meetings. Um, to do with Skoll, I like to do breakfast at the Randolph Hotel, uh, not only because it's a compelling meeting space, but it ups the odds for Skoll's famous serendipity. Uh, the afternoon tea area at the Randolph is light-filled and comfortable as well. Naturally, the Said Business School uh, in the Tents is a great place, but if you are in the ecosystem and not able to um, go to Said, there are other great spots around Oxford and Claire can shed more light there. 
Um, I also suggest something out of the box for a meeting space, such as the Ashmolean Museum. I mean, obviously your treat, but I'm a little overbooked at Skull now. So, uh, but I did make room for a morning run with someone since I need to get movement in first thing in the morning anyway, uh, here in Boston, when people are meeting with me, um, others are asking like, oh, you're meeting with Natalie. Are you uh, kayaking on the Charles? Are you power walking Calm Ave? Are you going on a hike? So um, I love I love this in that being in a more informal setting helps me discern, is this a leader in a mission I want to invest our services in? Is this a, the kind of human uh, who will be sort of a beloved client or a beloved partner? And, uh, and it also makes the interaction far more memorable. So uh, preparing for the week as well, uh, going through the attendee list. Is anyone who you already know registered? Reach out to them, letting them know you're eager to reconnect. Just something informal, uh, just a quick drop of line through LinkedIn or email. Um, keep in mind that people you know may be connected to others you're keen to meet, um, and perhaps they let they map to them on LinkedIn. Are they open to uh, an email introduction before, during, or after the form so you can make it easy on them with a ghostwritten template? Or do they have ideas of people that you should know that may be not on your radar yet? Like, you know, an example, curiosity could be who else cares about SDG5 as deeply as we do that you feel I should meet while we're in Oxford? Mm -hmm. um, and also offer, you know, how can you help them? How can you help move their work forward? I think life is a boomerang and uh, Skull has a ethos of generosity. And um, I find that really magic. So also that ethos around uh, how can I help you? Opportunity collaboration is another convening in the fall that absolutely has that ethos. Uh, among others. So for those um, with whom you're specifically hoping to meet, be prepared with an opener that's specific to that person. Um, you can also reach out to them on LinkedIn or, you know, in advance or during school week. Um, an example would be, I'm thrilled you're here because one of the things I've admired about your work is your approach to X. I hope our paths cross while here in Oxford. Let me know if you're up for a chat while here. So it helps begin a LinkedIn conversation, but also uh, puts the other person at ease a bit knowing that you recognize their work, you've done your homework and you wouldn't waste their time. So ups the odds for a yes. You want to make it easy for the person to say yes. Um, if they don't have time, don't take a no as a final no. It just may be like me, their dance card's completely full. And uh, you can always follow up afterwards, misconnection in Oxford. Um, so all is not lost. Uh, to do is scheduling your time on site, attend the plenaries. They are amazing. And uh, so not only for the inspiration, the content, uh, the musical performances and more, it's just mind blowing, but also so you have something to talk about that connects you to others. Um, it's very unifying. It's very authentic. Um, the, the year Brian Stevenson spoke blew me away. I think I've watched that on YouTube 10 to 20 times just so extraordinary. And I'll even reference it to this day when, when I know someone was at the same skull and, um, or Sarah McLaughlin's performance or when Michael Franti performed and Bono and Don Henley were his backup singers. <laughs> like these experiences um, are pretty incredible. And the great thing about the plenary is that Skull Foundation has made it available to everyone, not just the delegates, but to the ecosystem folks as well. Um, I think there might be a small fee to do with the folks that are not official delegates, um, but Skull's an incredible partner to the sector as a whole, not just the delegates. Um, so uh, also Claire can shed more light on that. And um, also, uh, oh, so to do with things from the plenary, you know, there are some questions you can um, take forward, like what from today's plenary made you feel most alive? What surprised you? Uh, do you feel more or less optimistic about the world, the SDGs after today? So they're good conversation openers that are very open-ended and you really get to know uh, someone's heart in that way. Um, position yourself in well-trafficked areas. 90% uh, of success is showing up. So uh, just be, you know, strategic about that in the, in, in terms of being strategic and thoughtful about that. 
Um, and then showtime. So obviously authenticity. I like, I think it's a Buddhist saying, um, so is a wonderful servant and a lousy master. So leave your, your, the negative side of the ego, uh, at the door. Um, also, you know, lead with authentic personality, but approach your peers with as much humility as possible, true and showing up as the passionate change agent that you are. Um, show up as your whole self in all your integrity and brilliance, but also your vulnerability and relatability. Um, be open and curious. Share your passion with personal stories, the highs, the lows of your work. Uh, keep it real. And uh, I will say it's an open secret that funders know when they're being viewed as a walking dollar sign mm. and nothing is more off-putting and it's very like walls up. Um, and yet you might be incredibly mission aligned. So, uh, so be intentional about this. Also mean what you say and follow through on your commitments. So carve out time to send those emails you promised, the introductions that you promised, mm -hmm. schedule calls with the folks you met, make yourself accountable to continue the conversations. And I wanted to call this out out of so many pieces of advice because it's easy to get swept up in the generosity ethos of Skull, but be careful not to overcommit and then not deliver. Um, also, um, remembering every interaction is difficult. So after each conversation, take notes so you can personalize your follow-up in a meaningful way. Um, also mindset is key. Um, and it's particularly key, I think for NGO leaders. So let the merit of your work be your North star own your worth, take your full space in the room and the world, um, recognize you are equals in your mission to solve the problem with funders, but you're coming at it from an interdependent angles. So uh, operating from a place of pressure and scarcity is already putting you at a disadvantage. So keep that a positive uh, abundance mindset. It's very powerful when connecting with funders. And um, there's a session Catalyst 2030 is producing at the end of this month, I think April 25th. Uh, Mallory Erickson is a master at this. And, uh, and Lisa Corcoran is also a master fundraiser. And so really encourage you to attend, uh, to attend, attend that session. Um, be engaged and engaging. Um, there was an SSIR uh, article written by Kevin Starr of Malago Foundation, uh, 2016, and I love this article so much, and I love Kevin and everything he writes. Um, so, but it's called "The Pitch Is Dead: Long Live the Conversation." It's in it's in the blog Topher and I did that's being updated with Claire's guidance. But um, basically, the conversation should not first center around your organization or even theirs, but who you are as people in the world, not just what you do, but why. Make yourself and your organization stand up by introducing yourself with your purpose, uh, not necessarily your organization. So um, my example would be, uh, I'm Natalie Rexted. I work with global nonprofits to help them secure the funds they need to do their work in the world. So I don't mention black box philanthropy. It's like, who am I in this space? And why, does, why do I care? And, and also what's at stake? It really opens up a more open-ended conversation when you can lead with that curiosity about who they are. Um, again, I mentioned that sort of, how can I help you ethos? How can we help each other? Um, also, many of us have approached networking opportunities prepared with an arsenal of ways others can help us. We bombard them with requests, ask, prioritizing our own needs, um, potentially to the detriment of the larger mission. So it's not only unpleasant for everyone involved, including you, but we run the risk of creating a relationship uh, rooted in transaction. So a focus upon giving, not taking, creates a networking paradigm shift. And I love the work of Adam Grant. Um, I read his book, Give and Take, many years ago when it first came out. I really recommend it. Um, and so I won't keep banging the drum there. But I also love that Claire Wathen, I think we'll, if we can drop this in the chat, I think it was just a few days ago, Claire wrote a piece um, on how to approach Skull. And I loved the level of humanity um, and, and more in terms of, especially for new folks joining in. So I really encourage you to read that thought piece by Claire. Um, also captain obvious limit or eliminate alcohol. <laughs> You'll want to be at a hundred percent every day. Mm. Um, 
I read once that your brain power is impacted by 20% or so the next day after alcohol intake. Um, and obviously that depends upon the amount, but it sounds about right to me. Um, we just had a company retreat last week and uh, reported out one of the mornings, I'm 7% less here this morning, you guys. <laughs> so um, I want to be all in 100% at Skull. I don't want to kill the buzz with a buzz. So I'm doing a no, no alcohol Skull. And anyone who wants to join me in this challenge, um, email me and we'll create a WhatsApp group. Um, protect the asset. Um, actually, I'm going to let Claire talk more about this because of not only her embodiment of this, but as well, she is a key advisor to the well-being project and social entrepreneurs famously burn hot and we burn out. And so it's very, very important to protect the asset. So I will let Claire take that away. Um, to expound upon that. And of course, we are available to answer questions at the end of the session. So much more to share. Some of the um, resources that were dropped into the chat uh, are um, really go a bit more granular on these things. And uh, anyway, thank you for your attention. I hope our paths cross in Oxford. And back to you, Debbie. Great. And thank you so much. I love that advice about taking notes afterwards and keeping track of everything because boy, I meet all these folks and I can't keep track. So keeping that information afterwards and then coming with your humanity and who you are, that's just a wonderful piece of advice. Next, we're going to pass it off to Claire Wortham with the School Foundation and looking forward to hearing more about the event and about how to prepare for those events. Thank you, Claire. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be with you, see so many familiar faces and read where you're all coming in from. Um, first, just huge thank you to the Catalyst 2030 team and Black Fox Philanthropy for organizing this and creating this space. Um, we are very, very excited to be back in Oxford after a few years online and, of course, continue to provide that platform online um, coming into the, the 20th Forum next week. Um, hope you've had a chance to see our incredible new Skull Awardees. We've just announced that yesterday and are starting to um, share their incredible work. Part of the Skull Award is a film that we produce for each organization, and we have some really incredible um, new models, approaches to innovation, and uh, excited for you to meet them next week. Um, I'm happy to generally give a, an overview of what to expect. I think overall, um, the forum is an incredible platform to meet people that work in different parts of the ecosystem, whether that be different um, types of roles, different types of organizations, regionally or um, from a sector perspective, we curate 3,000 people to land with 1,400. This will be our largest and most global forum to date. And that's a year-round process that we continually work to expand our network and are excited to have, um, as of a few minutes ago, about 3,000 people signed up online. And ultimately, it's a celebration of the work that all of you do, how you show up, what you bring to um, the communities that you serve, and we hope that the forum can be a platform to um, be reminded why this is impactful, but also think about the different kinds of relationships that you can build throughout the week. Um, as you have probably seen, there's lots of resources on school.org for the forum itself. Um, I like to think of the program like a cake. There's lots of layers. There's lots of things happening at all times. So first and foremost, um, we invite you to embrace the joy of missing out of things that will be happening simultaneous with whatever you choose to do. Um, there are lots of people coming with lots of different interests and we've designed the um, small and large gathering moments throughout the week so that you can find people who are relevant to you, um, to your organization, to your work, to your broader interests, and hope that you do hold that both for you personally, as well as for the work that you're doing uh, day to day. Um, so you can see throughout the, the website, we have plenaries um, where we'll all be together in the theater or through watch parties. There are uh, about 50 sessions happening that are curated topically, mostly at the business school. There's also delegate-led discussions. Those are peer casual spaces, meetups around regions and topics like health and climate action. And uh, of course, the ecosystem events being a large part of the week as well. Those are about 60 events that are organized by local organizations or 
um, members of the SCOLD network. So no shortage of things to choose from. Um, really, our hope is that the, the few days that we're together, you find um, new connections, reconnect with old connections, um, and find some ways to weave in care for yourself as you go. Um, it, it, they are very long days, so um, I, I personally uh, highly recommend, first and foremost, building in buffer time to walk places, uh, comfortable shoes <laughs> to walk with, um, and, uh, you know, whether it's for, personally, I love a good nap, so taking power naps throughout the day or taking a walk along the canal, um, stopping in to um, have a, a cup of tea in the, in the midst of everything, Think about ways to pace yourself and to build in breaks so that um, it's not running from one thing to another the whole day. Um, I would also just say there are lots of ways to connect with people who are going to be in Oxford, whether they're delegates or otherwise. And we have a directory online um, that's the full 1400 delegates. There's also a mobile app. And if you're joining us for the virtual forum, there's all kinds of messaging components on that once you log into Hopin, our event platform. Um, and we've seen some really amazing connections happen um, as people are watching virtually and messaging each other. And uh, in some cases now working together in lots of different ways. So overall, um, we hope that there's things that are clear yeses for you to join, whether it's because of the topics or the regions or other focus areas to learn and connect. Um, but ultimately it is a connection platform and we've built in really spacious lunch breaks and other kinds of elements so that you can also embrace the serendipity as Natalie pointed out, um, being around the lounges, being around town, you never know who you're gonna meet. Um, and I'm happy to, to leave it there and, and answer other questions as you go. But um, just wanna say a huge thank you from the Skull Foundation and Skull World Forum team. I am just one person um, with a whole uh, amazing crew that's somewhere in between California and getting here to Oxford. Uh, and so we're, we're really excited to help host and see it as a way to start new connections, build on existing connections, and ultimately create more connectivity between a space that can often be hard to navigate, hard to um, figure out who to talk to, how to navigate which elements. Um, and so very, very excited to be together soon. Thank you. So we're so passing on to Matt. Awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, Natalie. Um, a real pleasure to be with you um, all here um, this morning, this afternoon, this evening. Um, and we've heard a little bit about how um, to think about um, and how to uh, pre-prepare. Um, and I uh, was really interested to uh, hear a lot of things, a lot of words coming out like vulnerability, passion, how to bring your whole self um, and how to bring uh, uh, the right mindset to a particular convening or a meeting. And I was thinking about this in the preparation for today. Um, and Debbie, I think already introduced me that my fun, the, the fun fact for me is that um, despite working for 20 something years uh, and having the great pleasure of serving um, some amazing uh, NGOs uh, as a fundraiser, really a fundraiser at heart, um, I did start off very early in my career as an actor. And so when I approach these sorts of convenings, I often uh, begin to think about uh, this in terms of how an actor might prepare for showtime. <clears throat> um, and so I thought I'd share with you um, five simple uh, steps that I go through when I'm preparing for a meeting, <clears throat> when I'm preparing to present at an event, uh, and when I'm thinking about all of the rich things that uh, Natalie and Claire have uh, uh, shared with us. Um, and ultimately, um, we are all actors. Um, human beings have been telling stories for around 9,000 years. And we tell stories in order to influence, in order to pass on information, and in order to engage people. So how do we prepare ourselves um, as actors? The acting process is really complex, actually. Um, and what works for one actor might not work for another. But I think these techniques are tried and tested, and they can really help to improve an actor's craft. But I think the process of preparing for an event or a convening is much the same. So how can we employ these techniques to employ our craft when we're approaching this sort of uh, an event? So the first one, and um, I'm happy uh, for you to take down the, uh, the, the, the 
So I thank you, Debbie. Um, so the first thing, um, before we do any of these techniques, is really we've got to dive into the story world. So think about when you read a book. Your eyes look at the words on a piece of paper, but that's not what your mind sees. Your mind dives into the world of the story. And we as Homo sapiens have been blessed with brilliant imaginations. So we can think about the story in our minds. Um, you go inside that world and you look from the inside out and your mind stops paying attention to the real world. And it brings that fantasy to the forefront as if you were really there. So you can apply the same concept in the world of acting, uh, the same concept as the world of acting um, and take the deep dive. Of course, it's not fantasy, um, but it gives you yourself, it gives you the time to think about the vision of your organization and the why. Natalie spoke about the why earlier, so important. So what is the impact you're having and what is the story that you're writing through your work? Think about the vision of the organization that you're meeting with and do the preparation and think about the people that you're meeting with and what's their story. Most importantly, what is the story that you could write together? And I think it's really interesting to think of it in this, in, in this term because it will then allow you to bring that passion and to bring that whole self and to prepare the right mindset. So then you need to do the script analysis as an actor. So you read through the script several times and then if you need to, you conduct more research. So you look at the socio-historical context, the genre, the style, the socio-economics, the politics of that play to ensure that you've got a really strong understanding of the character, either your character or those characters on the stage with you. So you can understand their contact, context and their drivers and motivations. And much the same when we're meeting with organizations, you really need to analyze the script so what are their drivers? What problems are the people trying to solve whom you're meeting with? N know as much as you can about their context. Where do you align and what are the points of synergy with your stories? Make notes, find points of commonality and use those to lead your discussions. Show thoughtfulness and preparedness and a real interest and understanding in their story too. Then on to char interrogate character motivation. So as an actor, you're looking for the intention behind why a character thinks, why they speak, and why they act the way they do. And this allows you to flesh out the character and create a consistent narrative logic. Of course, you want to understand the part of the people that you're meeting um, and what part they're playing, what's their vision and what's their story. Are they a founder of the organization motivated by personal experience? Are they the CFO? Are they motivated more by financials and impact measures? Be prepared to understand what might motivate that person and appropriate your story accordingly. And really important, stop and relax. When you're in a convening like this, Natalie, you talk brilliantly about going for a run, making time for mindfulness, you know? And so a really easy thing to do when you're rushing between meetings is a really simple acting breathing technique. And I want you all to indulge me now just for 30 seconds, right? So this is what we do as an actor when we're thinking about the scene, we're thinking about how we move through the space. It's a, it's a breathing technique. So I'd just like you all to close your eyes just for 15 seconds. You're in the comfort of your own home. Nothing terrible is going to happen. And I just would like you to very gently breathe in through your nose to the count of four. So if you exhale and breathe one, two, three, four. Hold for seven, two, three, four five, six, seven, and breathe out to eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just relax and feel that your brain stops spinning. Sometimes it can take a second or two for it to really stop, but it's important to bring your brain to a halt. And that's the real key to being able to unlock your creative state. Find a moment before a meeting and practice this. 
sit down in a corner, find a quiet space, or even take yourself off to somewhere private. But once you've relaxed, all the walls start to fall away. All the stresses of the conference, the busyness, the anxieties. You're in a heightened state of awareness. Your senses are in tune. Your imagination and your creativity begin to run free. And fears will disappear as instinct replaces overthinking. And you can begin then to step inside that character that you need to be for the meeting. Instead of trying to be a puppet master from the outside. So this is a really good technique to center yourself and find that mindset and bring your whole self and your passion to the meeting. And then finally, you've got to create your new reality. So maybe you've just been to a convening, maybe you've been speaking at an event, and so now your time, you're prepared, you're relaxed, you've got your research. Um, and then you begin to see, feel the world around you if you're really there. So as an actor, at that point, you start to think about, well, how do I play this role now? So am I angry? Do I stomp around? You know, what characteristic do I take on? And of course, we're hoping you're not going to be stomping around at the Scroll World Forum. But I think it's very important to think about your behaviour, to think about your communication style, and to think about your approach. And how might the person you're meeting receive that approach and behaviour? So these are just some really simple techniques that I use. They were things that I was taught and I hold dear to my heart as an actor. They may not work for you all, um, but I, it wouldn't be right to uh, talk about a theatrical uh, mechanism without reminding ourselves of what a very famous playwright once said, William Shakespeare. And I'll leave you with the quote, of all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. We all have a role to play. We all have a story to tell. Um, and I hope if you're joining Skoll or another convening in the future that those few techniques might just help to, to, to think through that. So thanks for the opportunity. And at that point, I will hand back to Debbie. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. That was beautiful. We should have done the pause. I know. Thanks, Natalie. Uh, everybody do the thumbs up. We should have done the pause at the beginning for our breathing techniques. I appreciate that all of you joined us for that. So we're going to put everyone on screen. Um, we're going to have some conversation uh, and ask questions. So we would love for you to put in the chat any questions that you have. I'm going to kick off with a couple of questions for our panelists, and then we'll go from there. But first off, I know a lot of us will not be able to go to the Skull World Forum in person, and uh, but there are other convenings if you're able to join Oxford and that's happening in town, and then also the virtual experience as well. So Claire, I'm going to ask you first, where are some opportunities for folks to connect and learn uh, that's outside of the actual on-site event? Yeah, it's a great question. Thanks, Debbie. Um, First, there are just as many, if not more, people that come to Oxford um, that are not delegates, and we really um, are excited that in the last couple of years, ecosystem events and other independent things have sprung up, so we really do see it as a platform, and um, it's one of the interesting uh, tensions that we wrestle with every year in wanting to have more people attend, but also knowing the power of curation and um, being able to put people in spaces together that um, are driving specific kinds of change. So that changes every year, but really excited to have um, a couple different options. First, the virtual forum. We'd really love to invite you, your colleagues, friends, um, anyone that is interested in joining. That will be a live stream based experience. Um, all three plenaries, quite a few of the sessions, um, multiple translations available, chatting functionality, other kinds of ways to connect. As I mentioned, there's uh, close to 3,000 people that have registered for that, and we expect that to go up as well. Um, everything that happens content-wise in Oxford will also be recorded and posted online within a couple of days. Um, we have an amazing uh, film editing team that works very quickly around that to get that content out. Um, and so lots of ways to engage in the conversation. There are pre-meetings and post-meetings happening in, in London, as well as Oxford, just taking advantage of the global um, group of organizations that are coming into the UK. So 
I would invite you to um, yeah check out the, the online version. If you're in Oxford, all of the ecosystem events, those 60 plus events I mentioned um, are independently organized, um, open to anyone to sign up. They all have Eventbrite links. Um, so you're very, very welcome to join those. There are watch parties for all of the plenaries. Um, I dropped in the chat a little bit ago. Um, there's also a award ceremony um, group. So in general, there's lots of people that will be around lots of evening, morning pub activities. We kind of take over the town that week is, is chosen um, because it's um, the spring break for the university. Um, and so the, the town kind of clears out of the students and we kind of come in. So um, really very welcome to join in the different uh, virtual and Oxford elements. That's wonderful. And thank you for sharing that information. When uh, I do like this idea of the marmalades happening at the same time, there's other events. So if you're in Europe and you're close by, be sure to join in um, for any of those events. I One of the opportunities I think at the School World Forum is that a lot of people that are there or at other communities, so it's not just about the School World Forum, but other convenings as well. Share, Matt and, and Natalie as well, share a little bit about the fundraising opportunities. You know, you don't want to go in as the development person, I'm going to go raise a bunch of money, but talk a little bit about how you prepare before you get to the event and then at the event, what you do. Matt, I'll send it to you first. Oh, well, thanks, Debbie. Um, yeah, I think so. I, and I was seeing some questions um, uh, percolating in the chat around advice on what materials to take and um, on how to shortcut to donors that are a match. And I think for me, and of course we all have different approaches to this, but certainly for me, I think it is about the research that you do in advance of this event. So understanding who are the people whom you wish to connect with, taking a systematic approach to that and by understanding their story, taking some time to research the organizations and it may well be that there is a, you know, that there, there is a foundation, for example, who you've really had your heart set on has been a priority. And actually, you know, they may not be so well strategically aligned with your organization. And so it's okay to move on as well. <clears throat> and, um, you know, and, and to close the door and to, and, and to pursue other um, donors who are a, a, a stronger match or other organizations with whom you um, want or, or whom you want to influence. So for me, it's about research. Don't be scattergun about it, because I think you know. Um, I, I think if you've got your research, you've aligned, and you understand where you strategically align. I think even in the reach app then as well. And I think somebody posted a comment around, you know, you can feel like you're being ignored. I've been a fundraiser for over twenty years, and I'm constantly ignored. So I really feel your pain. Um, but I think if you have aligned your story and there's a compelling reason, I think share that reason in your introduction and your reach out, you know, and lead with that, lead with that as being the reason that you think um, you should be meeting with that organization and they should meet with you. It doesn't always work, but I think it helps. And I'll hand over to one of my other colleagues. Okay, super. I'll, I'll jump in as well. And I just want to echo what Matt said about doing your homework and demonstrating that you're not wasting their time. Um, so folks that you want to meet out, meet up with, um, that you know you want to meet up with, make sure you have an opening statement for them. Say, I'm so thrilled we ran into each other. Um, I've admired how you've approached X and how that aligns with us is Y. Um, it's crazy town here. I wonder if it makes sense for us to meet maybe after the dust settles or if you want to go for a power walk or, you know, so something along those, like an invitation, but also demonstrating that you're not just going to spray them, um, leading with curiosity about them, their journey. Funders absolutely have a hero's journey, um, almost as fiercely as the, as the NGO leaders. Um, so what motivates them? And um, I think there was a, is a, stalk, a feeling like stalking question um, in the <laughs> chat. And my advice would be to just be very respectful. There is an opportunity after school to say, you know, you can LinkedIn or email if you have their email. Missed connection in Oxford would love to have a conversation around X. Um, if they were a speaker, if they were in one of the panel, something, 
write down the golden nuggets that really resonated with you. Like what you said here really resonated with me. Um, would be curious to continue the conversation. Something that is human to human, you're in this work to solve the same problem. You're coming at it from different angles and just demonstrate that level of um, equality um, and elegance and again, after uh, respect. So opportunity collaboration a number of years ago did like a, a role play with, uh, it was all <laughs> the funders did kind of a spoof of what happens to them at conferences. And so one funder is there with their family and an NGO leader comes forward and is like, you know, interrupting them in the middle of their family, you know, it's just like, and, and the odds of actually connecting with that funder in that way goes down dramatically. Like you're not respecting me as a human. I'm here with my family. So be respectful. And if no, and, and just accept the no with elegance. And there's a chance to follow up afterwards. Missed connection at Skull. Hope to continue the conversation. Great. Claire. Yeah, I would love to jump in here. Um, first and foremost, funders are human too. We just happen to mm -hmm. sit at an organization that is um, on a different part of the ecosystem. Um, I really think we would all benefit from like reducing the pressure on ourselves, regardless of what you are looking for. Um, if we can start with, as you've heard from, from many folks here, you know, start with what brings you to this space? What are you working on? What questions are you carrying? Yes, I do run a portfolio and my colleagues also run portfolios that may be on the website or in other public places relevant to you and your organization. But just like all of you, there's a lot more that's not um, published at this point that I would know. And so if you come at the conversation more from a um, space of connecting as human, building relationship, sharing what you're curious and interested about, you don't know who I know or what I know. And so I wouldn't limit the conversation by coming in with a transaction in mind. Mm -hmm. Of course, fundraising is essential and important. And for many of you here reading um, your, your chats, um, a priority for why you're engaging at the forum and other convenings. But I would just really invite you to um, bring that excellent exhale activity into how you're approaching these conversations, because um, there's so much more that I would imagine each of you have as a vision for where you are heading, where your organization might head. Yes, there are immediate needs. Yes, there are immediate goals. But what might the longer term look like? And I would love to invite you to bring a spaciousness into the conversation because these conversations are usually over time. And if you can focus on building the relationship and helping me, for example, understand who you are and why you do what you do. Um, that will help me think about who I know, what might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, if there is alignment with my organization, my job and my responsibility being someone who works at a foundation is to tell you what your next steps are to explore that directly with us. Um, but foundations, just like all of you, have extraordinary networks and access to different kinds of information and different kinds of people. And so I would really invite you to hold the transactions in mind that you are specific goals that you are looking for, fundraising for specific things, but think more globally about where you might be heading and how the relationship could blossom over time. I think it will help everyone connect more uh, authentically and not pressurize that specific conversation um, because that, that's felt on both sides of the equation. I think it's time to move beyond this, are you funding or are you fundraising? Because we are all contributing to this progress. Money is an important element here, but there's so much more intellectual capital, social capital, other kinds of capital. So I could talk for days about this, but just really invite you to depressurize and approach this simply as you and yourselves and your vision. Wonderful. I, I do want to make a point. Matt sent me to the Skull World Forum event in New York last year when they decided to not do it virtually. And there was just a handful of people that went. And these fundraising people like bring whole portfolios of like everything about that fundraiser, which I didn't even know. But I loved they had these little booklets and they had photos of the fundraiser because I spent a half an hour hanging out with one of the IKEA um, funders and I had no idea who he was, which was probably good because the conversation was super fun. 
But I thought it was interesting that I, you know, I was like, oh, I realized that was one of the people I was supposed to talk to. So just a little tip in there. I do want to point out, I know we're running out of time, fundraising resources. Natalie, you guys did a great handbook of resources. We're going to share it in the chat. Can you just give a little plug for that resource? Oh, <laughs> yes, um, sure. Wow, thank you. Um, so Black Fox Philanthropy is open source because we know so many NGOs could never afford our, our fundraising services. We are most known for being an outsourced development department, but many things within, within that that are standalone services. So, so much of what we do for clients, um, we'll then do webinar, training webinars, um, blog posts, and they're very intentionally plug and play because you can attend a webinar and talk about theory and approaches and things like that. But what does it look like in practical bits, especially if you're an early career fundraiser, it can be a bit of deer in headlights. So we actually create scripts, choreography, um, very, very plug and play. And it's not the kind of trainings that are sort of half content, half marketing. Now you have to work with us. Um, it's one of the beauties of starting Black Fox Philanthropy as a funder with impact as the primary driver. It's how do we lift all ships? And so, um, of course, people are, um, you know, that's great, but we just want you to do it. Like, of course, that's what we exist to serve leaders like you. But we also recognize that um, we can really advance missions of so many more organizations through this open source resource. So the handbook is very analog. I, I would say the cobbler's children has no shoes. We'll sexy it up, I suppose, at some point. But the content is very, very solid. Um, proven through many, many decades of my own experience as, uh, as a fundraiser, as well as our incredible team. And uh, actually, Black Fox Philanthropy is doing a, a webinar on April 11th on engaging, um, uncovering funders, as well as engaging them. So it's funder research and comms. So um, actually, one of our team members maybe can drop that in the chat. So anyway, thank you. Hoping to collaborate with Catalyst 2030 on uh, on updating that fun uh, updating that handbook as a resource for the entire Catalyst 2030 like co-branded resource and I think Catalyst 2030 is also going to be curating other incredible fundraisers so look for that coming down the pike. Yes, definitely. Um, I did want to get Evan's question in here real quick about curious to hear from the perspective of funders and what funders are hoping to achieve at, at a conference and event like this. So if you can each give me 30 seconds of your insight of what you think, uh, Natalie and Claire, what you think the funders are looking for at these events. Hmm. I'll defer to Claire first because she's mm -hmm. the... Uh, well, we have about 280 funders that are coming. Um, the majority are from philanthropic institutions. So they're either executives or um, program officer type of role. So they're essentially overseeing portfolios. And um, the remaining funders are individual donors, um, corporate foundations, um, impact investors, other kinds of commercial bank type vehicles. Um, so it's a bit of a mix. I would say overall goals include sourcing, sourcing for new pipeline development, et cetera. Um, and we do quite a bit of work actually within the foundation to um, understand funders' priorities and let them know who is coming. And we're making lots of introductions uh, behind the scenes ahead of that. A lot of funders are looking for peer, um, either support, co-investment opportunities, alignment in general. We're looking for people who are also funding in our strategic priority areas, for example, health and pandemics and climate action. We're looking for other people who are developing similar strategies so that we can be additive together. Um, and then also, I think just like everyone, uh, there are people who are interested in being part of a, a broader um, space to connect and learn and be inspired and rejuvenated and um, lots of general connections, I, I would say there, but um, certainly to at the school foundation, we're particularly interested in um, helping to evolve philanthropy to more equitable, more core funding based approaches. We're um, just in the last year starting to invest with our endowment in more responsible ways. And so we are hosting a number of private funder only events in order to share how we've gone about that. We also have other funders that are innovating in other ways. And so that's really a lot of, there's a, a bit of a track for funders 
um, to support one another and try to do more, better, faster together. And a lot of what we're facilitating on that front is to um, create spaces for that to happen. And, and we do that throughout the year, but the forum is, is a great way that we also get to know new funders and put organizations in front of other funders. So I have several colleagues that focus entirely on funders and our network. My team also does that, but looking at where can we be more collective um, within the funder space specifically. Great. Great. Last tip of advice for everyone before we leave. Quick little shout out. What What is your advice as you're leaving here that when you're preparing for a convening, when you're at a convening, what would you give folks as your last tip? Protect the asset. You are yes, the asset. And protect, take care of yourself. Take care of your people. Matt? Make it personal. Rem remember everyone's a human being. Wonderful. Claire? You are ready and you are enough. Don't doubt Beautiful. yourself. Beautiful. Beautiful panel. So everybody give a shout out to our attendees. If you can put it in the emojis, thank you so much for them for engaging us with us. We appreciate these wonderful, wonderful panelists and what they've done. Also, the other two parts of this session that's coming up is the building blocks of fundraising, going back to the basics. And that's going to be on Tuesday, the 15th. And also we are all fundraisers. Everyone is a fundraiser from interns to the board. I love that. And that be held on May 30th after Catalyzing Change Week. So we welcome you to those sessions. Technically, they're member-only sessions, but maybe we'll just forget that y'all were here and you're already members. If you're not members of Catalyst 2030, be sure to fill out. Um, we're going to put in the chat information about Catalyst 2030 and how to become a member of Catalyst 2030. We have a session tomorrow on for Dream a Dream team and hearing some wonderful stories from young change makers and the work that they done in India and around the world. Lastly, here's some information about Catalyst 2030, um, just 2,200 members, 197 countries. It's a huge movement of social change innovators. And I did forget, for some reason, the slide for Catalyzing Change Week. Apologies for that. Make sure you sign up for Catalyzing Change Week, our big event, May 1st through 5th. So thank you for the poll questions. For those of you, if you can do the poll questions very quickly, we'd love to have uh, your responses there. Thank you. And we're going to unmute and say goodbye to our speakers and thank them. I'm going to go to full screen. Sorry, I still have you pinned somehow. Somebody else pinned. Um, and we want to um, thank the speakers unmute as you're leaving and say goodbye. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We got to figure out our pins faster. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, Super relevant and actionable. Thanks again, Natalie and Matt and Claire. Sorry. Thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you.